Okay, so this is what the question says. It says one type of uh, BB gun uses a... Yeah. The BB gun part is an important. What's important is, is a spring-driven spring plunger. So uh, I'm recalling some of the things that I learned in an earlier chapter. So back when we were doing conservation of energy, we covered the spring potential energy. So we have a uh, spring potential energy that has this form one half times the spring constant times the displacement squared. I have a feeling that's going to be useful here. So let me write it down. So I have a, uh, I have it available uh, to blow BB from its barrel. Uh, so BB here is just going to be something with some mass that might be relevant for us somehow. It asks, Calculate the force constant of its plunger spring if you must uh, compress it to... Okay, so this is some kind of delta x max to drive the... Ah, that's interesting. So we are not really looking at the mass of the BB. We are looking at the mass of the plunger. Um, that might make a sense. It, it, I guess what I'm thinking of is in a um, apparatus of this type, rather than the plastic BB ball, it might be the plunger that has more mass. So you would use mass of the plunger to figure out um, how it all. Okay, so the top speed of Vmax. Okay, um, I feel like I've been given. So we are asked to find the spring constant, and I think I've been given enough information to use conservation of energy uh, because we are given some maximum distance compressed. So what this will connect to is some sort of maximum gra uh, gravitational, maximum spring potential energy. And that will somehow connect it to maximum speed, which will connect it to maximum kinetic energy. So I think I'm going to use conservation of energy principle. And let me draw some snapshots to make sure I have a correct mental picture as I work through this question. That's uh, one of the things that I would uh, strongly recommend that you get into habit of. Because one weakness, downside of conservation law um, problem solving strategy is that um, it's so easy to reduce it down to a formula and not draw a clear sequential mental image of what's going on. So, um, so it, it, the, the onus is on you to provide that, that connection. So I'm going to imagine um, spring. So let's say it, uh, it starts out compressed, it starts out with the maximum potential energy, but I'll draw some equilibrium length of the spring so that I have some correct mental image in mind. And I'm going to um, illustrate my plunger with this uh, block of mass M. And there's a BB ball sitting here. And um, I guess in this particular description, we are imagining the BB ball is light enough that its mass doesn't significantly contribute. So what we are describing as the maximum displacement would be this, and um, and this would be one of my snapshots. This is my snapshot one that I'm going to use in my in writing down of my conservation of energy equation. And you imagine what happens when you let the whatever's holding onto this plunger go, then the spring will push on this uh, whole mass and accelerate it forward. Now. You have to think through this carefully. So it's at this equilibrium length when this plunger is at the equilibrium length position that uh, where, um, so, so at this position, the spring is at um, equilibrium length. <laughs> Um, now, as you imagine going past this position, you have to think through what the spring does. And I guess it depends on how the spring is attached. Um, so if the spring is actually firmly attached to the plunger, then past this point, the spring will kind of pull back on the plunger to slow it down before it reaches the end here. 
uh, where the velocity will be zero, all that. Now, if you are focusing on the BB ball, I think to a degree, what happens after this point doesn't affect the BB ball. Because after this point, the plunger is slowing down. The BB goal ball will hopefully continue to move forward at its maximum speed and, and, and it'll do its thing. So, so this is the, the ending point, the snapshot that we would be interested in. So we will call this point uh, my snapshot number two, where the plunger is moving at its maximum speed and, and I can say up from snapshot one to two, energy is conserved. So I'm going to start out with this uh, expression of conservation of energy, um, which says, conservation of total energy, mechanical, uh, so uh, total energy, meaning mechanical energy, which is the sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy at point one. I know some of these values will be zero. I just want to write it down so that I don't forget and I build a good habit. And when we say energy is conserved, what we are saying is that this uh, total quantity is something that doesn't change as this whole thing goes through its process potential energy at snapshot two plus kinetic energy at snapshot two, okay? In snapshot one, this whole thing is being released from rest. So I can say kinetic energy is equal to zero. And in snapshot two, this is where it's important that our spring will be at the equilibrium length. And, um, and, and that, that corresponds to when the plunger has the top speed. Uh, you have to think through, um, after that point, the plunger is going to get pulled back by the spring so it will slow down. So once you work all that out, then we can say, oh, at this position, at this snapshot, the displacement of the spring is zero. So it has a zero potential energy. So we get a very simple equation. I just uh, didn't want to skip to that simple final equation because sometimes people forget these intermediate steps exist. And, um, and you know, if someone wanted to complicate this problem, I could give you a version where you have to go, where these don't disappear. So anyways, so my initial potential energy, one half K times delta X max squared, is equal to my final or the the kinetic energy at the equilibrium position of a spring. So that would be another one half mass of the plunger standing in for mass of everything that's getting, getting pushed around by the spring uh, times the maximum speed of the plunger squared. Okay, so that's my equation. I see one unknown spring constant and I think everything else is known. So. I can go through algebra here, cancel out one half, and I want to move delta x max over to the other side. And when I do that, I get k is equal to mv max squared over delta x max squared. Um, just to, and let me just copy this over. Uh, when you do this, just to make sure that um, you're, um, that your uh, units are in basic SI units. I think, yeah, the question was nice. It gave you the mass in kilograms instead of grams or some other unit where you had to convert. So, uh, so I'll plug this in after I'm done with the part of B. Okay, so part to B says uh, or asks, what force must be exerted to compress the spring? Oh, um. Okay, the question is being a little bit um, vague. I, I'm going to assume it means what maximum force must be exerted. Because at the beginning of the process here, the force is zero. Uh, you know, any uncompressed, unstretched spring at the very beginning, you need a zero force. Because but uh, what you care about is okay. How much force up to what force do I need to go so that uh, when uh, so that when I compress it all the way down, then I have enough force to provide that. So really, for uh, so for that it should be the maximum force, and we can write down Hooke's law. Hooke's law says the restoring force of spring 
is given by minus times the spring constant times delta x. Uh, I'm putting minus because when you treat force and displacement as a vector quantity, it's a restoring force, it's a opposite to the displacement, just review of <laughs> what you've seen earlier. So in, in terms of force, the magnitude, it's simply, okay, the maximum force, it's going to be the spring constant, which we conveniently calculated above, times the delta x max. That will give you the maximum force you need. And actually looking at this expression, some things cancel a little bit out. So let me just plug in what k is. k is equal to mv max squared over delta x max um, squared. So uh, if I'm multiplying it to delta x max, one factor of this cancels out a factor of this. So the force here is mass times uh, V max squared over delta x max. So, so that should be it. Let me plug in the numbers, make sure I got it right. <laughs> I probably got it right, but it's happened in the past where um, <laughs> um, things didn't work out. Let me do it this way. I'm going to use Sage. I have Sage math open for other things I want to do. Let me use this as my calculator instead of the scientific calculator from uh, Windows. This, this is actually a better calculator in many different ways. Um, so mass. Uh, oh, oh, because I can do this. Let me declare my variables. M, uh, Vmax, uh, Xmax, uh, and K. No, I, I don't think I need to define K. OK, so for my K, I can say, OK, my K is mass times V max squared divided by X max squared. Now, um, it's an expression. Now, what I can do is I can use a substitute function to plug in the numbers. Say that uh, my mass is equal to 0 0.03 kilogram. Now, one thing that uh, um, you have to watch out for is uh, Sage math is an by default, it's not unit aware. So, uh, so you have to take care of the units. Vmax is uh, 15 meters per second. That's the right. Um, oh, am I? Ah, 0 0.7 meter. Okay, xmax is 0 0.17 meters. Okay, so that should give us an answer to 33.6. 233.6, what is it? That's, oh, a uh, unit. Um, uh, you should work out the unit yourself. Uh, here, I'll just say uh, it's Newton per meter. And the one way I can get to that is by looking at here. So Newton force is equal to spring constant times displacement. So the unit of spring constant must be something to which if you multiply by meter, you get Newton back. And that's this one. Okay, what force must be exerted? Oh, so for that, I have um, this basic expression, except I'm not squaring the denominator. That's the expression, and I can do this. Uh, by the way, I'm putting the parentheses around the whole thing because of some programming um, thing. <laughs> um, so, so that I can be sure the program treats this entire expression as one expression, and the, the function I'm calling here applies to the whole thing. That's basically what that's for. And I can also save myself a little bit of work if I save this uh, dictionary element thingy, but uh, I'm just trying to do this quickly. Okay, the force, the maximum force is 39.7 Newton, yeah. 39.7, well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> On my keyboard, the three and period are very uh, close. Yeah, so that's it. Um, it's a uh, um, so this this question should be a quite of a bit of a review question. Uh, nothing here actually depends on your knowledge of oscillation, but um, as we are doing oscillation questions, your prior familiarity with the physical setup it's helpful. It's helpful. So that's why we are asking this question.